Hey everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. Uh, this one I am showing, I'm answering yet another question, which is great. Done three of them within a couple days here. But the question is, is there a difference between scale to frame and set to frame? And this question was posted on one when I was answering a question about adding uh, using keyboard shortcuts for the new fit or fill and fit uh, functions inside of Premiere Pro. But that question here is, is there a difference between scale to frame and set to frame? So uh, scale to frame and set to frame has been uh, commonly used for many years inside of Premiere Pro. Uh, this is a function that's in the preferences rather than in the, pro the new properties panel that they've added recently. So let's show the difference between those here. Uh, but, uh, with all, all, all those features here, and this is to the best of my knowledge here, uh, the, the way you used to use this inside of Premiere Pro is you would go under settings, you would go under media, and you would have the two options under here. And under that little drop down, you have none, which doesn't do any scaling. It makes, if you drop something that's a different resolution in your timeline, it would zoom up on your footage if your timeline was a smaller resolution, or it would zoom out on it if your timeline was a higher resolution than, than your media. Uh, but this little drop down here, they changed this. This used to be uh, scale, scale to frame size and set to frame size. Set to frame size has been split into fit and fill. So fit to frame size is now replaced set to frame size that they used to have in here. And I'll describe the difference between those. Uh, but it's weird because now they have just fit to frame in the preferences and they didn't add fill the frame in the preferences. Well, if you have these check marked, it will add this to any media that you import while this is check marked. Now the difference between these when it was uh, scale and set, set to frame size, it basically um, would scale a clip down to, if you had something that was higher resolution, it would scale the clip down to fit within a sequence frame without changing its original resolution, uh, which basically means that it maintained its set, the same resolution. I'm gonna demonstrate here the, this here in a second. And scale to frame size, which is still here, uh, basically resampled the clip to match the frame size. And as I understand it, Adobe did this. So if you were, uh, had footage that was of really high resolution when you dropped it in a small resolution timeline, it was only reading, say, like 1920 out of 1080 pixels from a, like a 4K clip or a 6K clip or something like that. Uh, so which was supposedly supposed to make the machine run, make your clip play back faster. And it worked a, a little bit depending on the speed of your machine, but it did improve the speeds. So we're going to show this as you're importing. The, these things here are done for when you're importing clips. It'll add this feature to those clips as you're importing. Let's show the difference between those. And then I will show the new properties window and show you what it's doing there. But let's show you what happens when you have none uh, selected. And I'm going to hit OK. I've got a timeline here that is a 1920 by 1080 timeline. I'm going to import some 4K footage. I'm going to import this clip here. I'll import the same clip over and over again, show you what we're doing here. So I'm going to import that clip there, and nothing has been done to this. This is a, a 4K footage uh, clip here. So when I drag this in here, uh, well, actually, let me double click on it first. Double click on it, and we see the entire frame of this clip right here. That's the entire frame. Now, when I drop it into the timeline here, the timeline settings are different, so it's at, and nothing is in my timeline yet. So I was saying, do you want me to change the sequence settings to match the resolution of this clip? I'm going to say, no, keep the, uh, the, the exi existing settings. Watch what happens to this clip here when I when I put my playhead on it. Right now I'm in the source monitor, so when I click on this down here, it's going to switch to the program monitor. And notice how it's zoomed in. So this whole clip uh, is 4K, is four times the, the size essentially as as the 1080 clip. So it zooms, so it keeps its resolution and it's like zoomed in, and we're only seeing 1920 by 1080 pixels here, which is it's basically zoomed in and cropping it. So I'm going to select that, delete it. I'm going to go up to uh, Premiere Pro, and we got to go to settings. Let's go to media here, and I'm going to change this to change this drop down to scale to frame size here. So now any media that I import, I'm going to delete this one. I, uh, that attribute has now been added to this because it was already imported. I'm going to, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to import and import the same clip. And let's show you what this is doing. I'm going to grab this and drag it down and drop it in the timeline. I'm going to keep the existing settings. And now notice, it, yeah, so this letterbox, my, my uh, aspect ratio is different. That's important. So I want to show you what uh, the new property of Windows the new properties window does. But this has scaled it down uh, to the resolution. But now one interesting thing is if you uh, if you go to your effect controls window here and you select your clip, it's going to show the attributes here. And you show that this is at 100% scale. Basically, it's resampling this clip and treating it as if, as if it is a 1920 by 1080 clip and not a 4K clip. So it's only showing 1920 by 1080 pixels and not 4096 by 2160 pixels. If you wanna show your pixel count, 1920 times 1080 gives us our total pixel count, which is about 2 million pixels. 
4096 by 2160, which is the original clip resolution, is about 8 million pixels. So this is literally only showing one quarter of the amount of pixels as it's playing this clip back, which is, now this is the interesting thing though. Uh, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna go to our project window. I'm gonna select this and I'm going to rename this just so we can keep track of everything. Scale to frame size there. We'll call that scale to frame size because that's what I had selected when I imported it. Now with that rename, I'm gonna drop it in my timeline, keep existing settings, and I'm gonna show you the difference here. Now I'm going to import a clip. I'm gonna go up to settings and we're gonna to go to media and I'm gonna change this to uh, fit to frame. Hit okay, import, and grab the same clip and I'm going to name this one uh, fit to frame. Now I'm gonna grab this one and drag it in and drop it in on my timeline. And if we play through this here, if we look through these two different clips, this one, you'll notice that it looks exactly the same here. Let's jump between these first two frames here. So here's the first frame of the scale to frame size. If I arrow down and jump to the next one, here is the fit to frame. So they apparently look the same. They look like they're doing the same thing. Now this is where it gets different here. I'm gonna go to my effect controls window, select the first clip, and we're gonna scale on this one right here. Notice that this one says it's at 100. And if I jump down to the next clip and select this one, this one says it's at 46.9. Usually, if, if these were the same aspect ratios in my timeline, this would be 50% scale right here. And the reason why those numbers are different, why this one is 100 and this one is around 50%, it would be 50% if the aspect ratio was exactly the same and it wasn't letterboxing, is because this one is resampling it at 1920 by 1080, and it says it's now at 100%. So watch this. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to increase this uh, size the scale of this by 300% and zoom in because I want to show you what's happening here. So 300% as we move down and this is like a completely different pixel count. So I'm going to increase this by three times, which is three times 46, 46.9, 46.9 times three gives me 140.7. So to get the exact same sort of framing, I'm going to go to that uh, three times 46.9, which is 140.7. And hit return and it jumps up. So now those uh, frames should look exactly the same here. If I go to the beginning, they it, see that frame there at the very beginning looks exactly the same. I'm going to arrow down. So these look pretty much the same. One thing I want you to notice here is I'm going to move over. I'm going to move over this uh, window and hit my tilde key, which will take this full frame. And I want you to notice the resolution loss here. It looks a little bit kind of blurry and out of focus here. And as I arrow down and we'll jump to the next clip. Watch this. It's very subtle. Look how clear it looks. All of a sudden it jumps and looks clear. All of a sudden you see that shift and it looks clearer. So once again, what's happening? This one here has been resampled. Scale the frame says it has been resampled down to uh, 1920 by 1080. So when you zoom up now, it's going to lose resolution. When you arrow down to this next one here, this one you can withstand. You can you can zoom it up to like four times and it will still look the same quality as a 1920 by 1080 clip is, is kind of the idea. But supposedly this one will play back slower because it's reading all the pixels and displaying all the pixels instead of a portion of the pixels. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's show you uh, what happens in the properties panel when we do this in the properties panel up here. So now I'm going to import the same clip. Uh, that have been importing here. Oh, actually, before you do that, let's go in and, and change this to none. So we're going to go to media and we're going to change this to none. So nothing's happening to it. Uh, now I'm going to import it and I'm going to select the same clip and we'll name this one on properties panel. There we go. Uh, and we'll show you what's happening to this here. So I'm going to drop. So I'm going to drop this into my timeline here. And nothing has happened because this is 4K footage dropped in a 1920 by 1080 timeline. And I've got none selected, so it's not doing anything. So it is automatically zoomed up and displaying just 1920. It's cropped in the center of this and made it and just showing the uh, 1920 by 1080. So if we double click on this, we can move this around. You can see here is the edge of the frame there. So yeah, once again, um, it, it's zoomed up like in the dead center of this clip right here to show just 1920 by 1080 pixels out of this 4K file right here. So, which is approximately 2 million pixels. So now I'm gonna go up to fill and I'm going to hit fill. And this is the new feature within Premiere Pro. What it's done here, you can see the wireframes that are uh, outside the timeline. It zoomed it enough to just to fill it, it zoomed it down just enough to fill it up to the frame here, but uh, without letterboxing it. So if I zoom this out a little bit, You can see what's happening here. This is the full footage right there. I zoomed it down so it touches the top and bottom. You're lose, losing the small, the, the uh, left and right edges of this clip here because this aspect aspect ratio is different. So now if I move down and let's grab and drop another one in here. 
same thing, the properties panel thing. And now this time, rather than do fill, we're going to do fit. So I'll go up here in the properties panel and hit fit. And now you can see it has fitted the whole thing inside the image now, rather than fill, fill zooms it up as much. Fill scales down the resolution just enough to not have any letter boxing or pillar boxing or window boxing where fit zooms it down far enough to fit the entire image in, in this resolution of this of this timeline, which leaves it the letterbox. Let me deselect that there and show you now it is letterbox. Let's go back to fit there and it is letterboxing. Let's see what the similarities are to the fit to frame size. I'm going to select the first one here, go to effect controls, and this one right here is at 50. So it's 50% basically take it down like 50% scale, which is one quarter of the resolution. And now we jump down to the next clip here that's letterbox, select that, and it's at the same resolution as our first time when we did the fit to frame, which is uh, 46.9. So this is not like the very first one was at one was at 100 when it was fitting to the frame there. So these functions inside of the property panels are basically not resampling the clips. They're bringing it down to meet the resolution of the timeline while still maintaining the quality. If you zoom up on these things, they're not going to lose a quality like the scale to frame size did. So fit to frame size in the preferences is basically been split into two options, two different options, which is fill and fit here, but uh, Phil is basically doing the same thing as far as uh, downsampling is concerned. It's not doing any downsampling. It's still reading the re original resolution. So if you're zooming it up in a 1920 by 1080 and you zoom up on it, it's going to kind of keep the quality. It's going to make the quality still look good, where with the scale to frame size, you're not. So it's really kind of weird that they didn't include the fill and fit inside the new preferences. Or maybe they'll adjust that at some point. And I guess there is still kind of a, a point to using scale to frame size if you're using a slower machine. That's really what it comes down to. So, so if I'm working in a timeline that has a different resolution than the media that I'm importing, I usually go under my uh, preferences and just keep it a fit to frame size. And then if the uh, aspect ratio doesn't match, you have to go up and basically hit fit or, or fit or fill or whatever one helps to to fit it into the window without letterboxing it or pillar boxing it, which relieves the, which is the same as, it's similar to letterboxing, but it's putting the boxes on the left and right hand side rather than on the top and the bottom. So a little bit confusing. So hopefully that helps long explanation, but that's basically what's happening in your media preferences here with this little drop down menu versus the property panel.